Good morning everybody and welcome to this Sunday morning worship service from Thornbury Baptist. It's good to see you if you're near or far regular visiting, just poking around to see what's going on. You are really welcome. We trust that God would bless you this morning. Um, we've got lots of really great things hopefully this morning as we worship God together. Charlotte, our youth worker, will be sharing with us a bit later on uh, a message and uh, Hev's got some really good input for us, a lovely interview with Helen Sydenham. So I trust that God would meet with you as we worship together. But as we begin our service, let's pray together.
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We praise you, almighty God, maker of heaven and earth. We lift your name on high. You are eternal and all-powerful, gracious and compassionate, Lord God and loving Father. We give you our praise and our love. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for those affected by war. We pray particularly for the people of the Yemen. We ask you to move the leaders on all sides of the conflict. Turn their hearts to you, Lord. We pray for peace and an end, end to the suffering. We pray the people of the world. May the Black Lives Matter message bring about lasting change and an end to discrimination. We thank you that all mankind is created in your image and we stand on level ground before you. Give us today our daily bread. Father, we lift up those affected financially by the coronavirus crisis, for those unable to work, for those made redundant or in fear of the future. Provide for them, Lord, we pray. For all in difficulty, we ask you to fill their hearts with your peace and love. May they know deep in their heart that they are precious to you and in your care. Fill them, Lord, with faith and assure them of your love. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Forgive us, Lord, when we have let you down. For those many areas we fall short, we are sorry. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for us. Thank you that through your grace we are forgiven and accepted. We turn afresh to you. As you have forgiven us, so, Lord, we choose to forgive those who have wronged us. Where this is hard, Lord, we hand over the hurt and the pain to you. Renew our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your grace and the joy of your salvation. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Help us, Lord, to live wisely. Help us to fix our eyes on Jesus. Fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit so that we may follow in your ways. Love you with all our hearts and share your love with those we meet. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. 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 Enjoy this breakfast every day, you will be wiser than all your competition. You can understand things even better than your teachers. You could be taught by the best mind ever. You can enjoy a taste so sweet it will blow your mind. It won't even rise your blood sugar levels. It's going to help you to avoid taking the wrong paths and it can provide a light ahead of you showing you which way to go in your day. This breakfast is fortified with hope, truth, love, history, poetry, science, and guaranteed to transform your life. This product packs a punch so much in just one thing. For best results, it must be consumed daily. Best before date, well, this side of eternity, but words stand applicable forever. Wonder breakfast. Don't miss out, tuck into yours today. Available in all good bookshops, churches, online, hotel drawers, or most likely on your own bookshelf. So, what is this wonder breakfast? Where do we get this wonder breakfast from? 
the wonder breakfast is the Bible. The psalmist makes all these claims uh, about scripture, about the Bible, uh, when he's writing um, the ones that we just shared with you about Wonder Breakfast. And uh, you might be thinking, why breakfast? Well, today I've brought you into my dining table. My dining table is one of my favourite places. Uh, it's one of my favourite places because we spend time together here as a family. Uh, we spend time relaxed. We are generally happy because we're being fed. Uh, and it's a time when we have less distractions. And one of the things that we do in our family is we have a bookshelf next to our dining table. And one of the reasons that we have this bookshelf is because on this bookshelf we have lots and lots of Bibles and devotions and different things um, that we can read together uh, once we've finished eating our meal. So we tend to have um, a time where we read a Bible or a devotion uh, at breakfast time and it means it's a really good start to the day. We have created this kind of habit as a family um, so that it, it ensures that we get spiritually fed as well as getting food fed, physically fed. Um, and this really kind of sets us up for the day. We also then, at the end of the day, when we have dinner together, uh, we'll tend to grab another book off of the shelf, another Bible. Um, and it really, it just means that we kind of start and end our day uh, together with food and with the Bible. So I wonder whether you could have a go this week at redesigning the packaging for one of your favourite breakfasts. Maybe you really like cereal, maybe you like toast. So we have some templates on the website and on our Facebook page, um, which you could use to redesign the packaging for maybe a loaf of bread, maybe your favourite um, jam or something that you put on your breakfast, or maybe your favourite cereal box. Uh, and I'd like you to think about doing something on that redesigned packaging that will remind you of the importance of having uh, time with the Bible, tucking into the Bible every day. We've also got some printable, printable notes uh, that you can uh, tuck into your cereal boxes um, so that when you sit down to have a meal together you could get those out and just share that bible verse and share about what you guys think about it at the table. So enjoy! Wondering what to do this summer? Holy Baptist Church offers summer challenges. Six weeks of challenges for families to find raised children. Six iron on badges to earn to go on your free drawstring bag. Additional prizes for completing four or more weeks of challenges. It's free to take part. Uh, and to find out more, go to our website www.thornybaptistchurch.org.uk. Check out our Facebook page. Thornby Baptist Church does summer challenges. Whether your family is creative, adventurous, artistic, sporty, likes to cook, or just likes to eat, TBC Summer Challenges has something for you. So here we are, everybody, with Helen, and it's really good of her to speak to us this morning. Helen, do you just want to uh, introduce yourself to us a bit? Yeah, I'm Helen. I've been a member of the church for a few years. Um, I'm single. I've got grown-up boys who've left home. I've got a dog called Frodo. I'm, I work as an accountant, and um, I volunteer at Food Bank, Debt Advice, and, I, I, and Youth Work. So you're involved in quite a lot. Yeah. Various ways. So tell me um, how this sort of lockdown period's been for you then. Um, well, I'm an extrovert and I live on my own. So that's not easy. Um, and also I do a lot of things for the church, which have all stopped or changed apart from food bank. Um, but the biggest thing is that I lost my I got made redundant in February no January found a new job in February and started my new job on March the 2nd um, and then when the whole lockdown happened um, my accountancy firm their only clients is in um, the 
hospitality and retail sector. So a lot of us were put on furlough um, and I was told I was going to go on furlough. And then I was told that because I was a new starter, I didn't qualify for furlough and would be put on unpaid leave instead. So I've been on unpaid leave and not working for just over three months now. Mm. And that, to put it mildly, no doubt is pretty difficult. Yeah, I think the first six weeks, um, there was a lot of campaigning and all of that. And I think pretty much in denial, very angry, very frustrated. Um, one of the things that helped was being on a Facebook group with other people like me. Um, and because I'm a debt advisor, I know a lot about benefits and sources of help and all that. And lots of people knew nothing. So I was able to signpost people to organisations that could help. But the reality is um, universal credit doesn't pay enough to live on. So for most people, they were in really quite desperate circumstances. So was also able to pray for them and signpost them to mental health support. Um, I'm fortunate in that I have some savings because I knew the benefit system wouldn't pay me enough to support a house, a dog and a car. Um, but still there's that sense of injustice and actually this isn't fair, I didn't do anything wrong, I don't deserve being treated like that. And I know that God opened these job opportunities up for me. <laughs> and yet both of them have, you know, at the moment I've still got a job, but um, I think it's unlikely that I will actually get to go back to this job. They've suggested I look for other work. So yeah, that's not great. So, uh, you know, from a Christian point of view, that, I mean, it must have made it all much easier for you. <laughs> yes, I've got somebody to scream at. Um, and, yeah, it, it's really, it's really difficult. Um, and in the early days, it felt like God was really, really distant, like you were crying out and not nothing was changing and I wasn't hearing a lot from him um, and my normal ways of connecting with God which is through worship and corporate worship wasn't happening so um, it was really tough there was lots of mornings when I did my you know early morning bible study you know in tears and got very little out of it um, but one of the things I'd known I needed to do for a while was to read Job. And I felt God say, you need to, you know, read Job. <laughs> so eventually I got the message and read Job. And I found that really helpful, just recognising that actually we need to be equipped to deal with the ups and downs of life. And I think I've realised over this period that I don't always know how to deal with my negative emotions. I don't have a good system of doing that. Um, I read Hind's Feet on High Places, 99p from Amazon. Mm. Fabulous book. Sobbed most of my way through it. Mm. Um, but really got the idea that actually maybe what I was looking at as a punishment was actually not. Um, you know, um, and, and just holding on to God in it, you know, even when you can't feel him. Um, my son sent me an amazing song called Even If by Mercy Me. And that has, it says, even when you leave the mountains unmovable, give me the grace to say it is well with my soul. And if I'm honest, some days I could. <laughs> many days I couldn't but I'm definitely learning uh, or being taught how to how my emotions are not something that I need to ignore and suppress and put a put a worship song on and forget about them but ask God rather than take my anger away help me to understand my anger help me to understand you know what do you want me to learn in this 
Mm. So I think I'll get to the end a bit wiser, <laughs> whenever that end comes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, it's easy to make it sound good, isn't it? It's mm. easy to make it sound easy, but there's been some really hard days. Yeah. And, and my small group is awesome. We've had some amazing evenings of praying for each other, hearing from God for each other. And that has been, we've had some precious, precious times in God's presence. And that's been amazing. It's been a lifeline. Mm. Yeah. So this, this note, we, and we do have this notion, I think it's not an exclusively Christian one. It's a kind of Western idea that mm. everything should go swimmingly. Mm. And you're right, we're not equipped for those times that aren't easy, are they? So, so kind of what, what would you say to say other people watching today who are facing up to real tough, particularly relating to sort of job stuff, maybe, and finances? It's okay not to be okay. It's yeah. okay to find things hard. Yeah. I listened to some talks by John Mark Comer's church, and one of the things that a lady said there really impacted me which was, I'm having a normal reaction to an abnormal situation. Mm. You know, God can cope with our fear, our hurt, our anger, our frustration. Um, yeah, and, and God is for us. You know, there is, you know, if I look at my, my situation now and I listen to what's happening on the news, you know, they're speculating 4 million unemployed. I don't, I, I don't know. They're speculating the biggest recession that we've ever known. You'd say, well, you know, it's hopeless. But actually, where is my hope? You know, my hope has to be in God. And, you know, maybe my dreams of being a good accountant aren't, aren't God's dreams. Maybe, maybe all of this, you know, at the end, I will have a different part. I don't know. I'm just praying, you know, uh, I've learned to take each day as it comes and be thankful, learning to be thankful for what I have got rather than looking at what I haven't got. That, that is absolutely brilliant. So, you know, how can, you've obviously received loads of support from your mm. small group and other people too, I know. That. Yeah. How can, how can we pray for you and probably this sort of ongoing situation that people are going to find themselves enmeshed in? Obviously, I need a job. That's, I, and I, I'm pretty sure God's got something sorted and planned. But I think really, it's, you know, somebody appearing with a bunch of flowers means the world when you feel when it feels like the world's rejected you. Um, just love people. And, and I think, I've learned don't expect too much of myself don't don't put and hold my plans lightly mm, very good stuff I think we can all take that on board can't we thank you Helen and we will pray for you and we'll you know do what we can to be God's people to you over yeah. this period of time bless you thank you thank you
119, 97 to 105. Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Your commands are always with me and make me wiser than my enemies. I have more insight than all my teachers, for I meditate on your statutes. I have more understanding than the elders, for I obey your precepts. I have kept my feet from every evil path so that I might obey your word. I have not departed from your laws, for you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey on my mouth. I gain understanding from your precepts, therefore I hate every wrong path. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Hi there, so today we are continuing with the Rooted series and we're looking at being rooted in scripture today. 
And when we're thinking about becoming more rooted and grounded and deepening our foundations in God as individuals and as a community, scripture can be really key um, in keeping that connection with God. It can be key in really deepening our, our understanding and our awareness and our relationship with God. And often, um, I've heard the Bible kind of often referred to as, as a guide or as a, like a how-to of, of, of being a Christian. And in many ways it is. You know, I'm always encouraged by the verse in 2 Timothy that, you know, all scripture is God-breathed and is helpful for kind of teaching and correcting us. Um, it helps to, you know, thoroughly equip us for every good work um, that God has. And that's really encouraging. But also, scripture is you know, a place we can really encounter God. You know, it's not just a, a book that we pick up when we need help or a, or a tool that we, we need every now and again. But scripture is the very word of God, the place we can meet with him. That we learn to recognize his voice and his nature and his purposes and his ways. That we see the story of, you know, the God at, at the beginning you know, and the God that is working throughout creation and this incredible story of of him and his relationship to creation. You know, and then we, in the midst of all that, we discover like how we fit in to that story. So when we bring ourselves and, and our entire selves almost in surrender to, to scripture, that we learn to kind of be shaped by God's word and transformed that we learn that you know, we don't live by bread alone, but every mouth, every word of the mouth of God. And that's an exciting journey to, to be on, an exciting thing to get stuck into. And in Psalm 119, which is the, the reading we've had, it talks about God's word being a lamp and a light for our feet on our path. And this is, yeah, a really profound um kind of way of looking at it and I would encourage you to to go away and read the whole of Psalm 119 because it's it's quite inspiring when it comes to looking and thinking about God's word but in kind of Old Testament imagery um here when we're thinking about the kind of path and and our feet on that path what that's illustrating is you know the way we live the way we conduct ourselves you know what are our what are our actions what are our words what are the kind of, what's the structure that we kind of live our life out of? What's that, what does that look like? And our kind of inner motivations as well. And, you know, God's lamp and his light being a representation of his word. Those things represent direction and guidance. But also, um, I was really encouraged by reading that actually sometimes the light in the Old Testament represents God's presence as well and and the hope that we have. So when we're thinking about kind of piecing these these two things together, and we're wanting to truly follow, and you know Jesus and and you know like the disciples, you know just got up and followed him. You know the word of God is the lamp and the light that enables us to be able to see, to be able to know where to walk, to be able to know in every situation and everything we go through in life, in every way that we live, in our words, and our actions, we can bring it all to his word and in his word we can find guidance and we can find God's way and God's will and God's purposes. But that thing of God's word being a lamp and a light as well, it's that reminder that just as a light source enables us to see what it's saying is God's word enables us to see what we cannot currently see that enables us to, to see our situations enables us to see ourselves to see other people how he sees them it illuminates what we cannot currently see on our path and to walk in it and it's this exciting partnership of, you know, our feet and our our walk and our path. That's, you know, that's an exciting thing to think about. What are where are my feet going? But we're partnering with God's word, and not just partnering. We're being led. 
we're being, you know, his word initiates our feet. His word initiates kind of where we can go. And it's a promise that he will guide and he will lead. And along the way, he will, he will remain with us in his presence. But today, we don't just want to think about, you know, what God's word is and, and what it can be. But we're looking at how do we become more rooted? So I have four quick points um, that, yeah, I'll, I'll quickly, quickly share with you. But there's, yeah, there's, there's so much more than just this. Um, and the first thing is to become more rooted. One key thing is how we approach scripture. And that is be expectant. So when we approach scripture, we're not doing it kind of out of chore, out of wanting to kind of tick the, the good Christian box, but we approach expectant that God wants to speak. We approach knowing that without his guidance, that we cannot move. Without his guidance, we cannot walk in, in his ways and his purposes for us. That we approach like that image of the potter and the clay, being willing and being ready to be shaped by him, being shaped by, by his word. But we approach knowing we do not do it alone, but we've got the Holy Spirit in us, you know, the helper, the one that can teach us. So approach scripture expectant, pray beforehand, pray before you read, ask God to, you know, to reveal things through, whatever, through what you are reading. And the second point is time. So this one is more of a practical um, point, but a, instead of, you know, if we want scripture to really kind of be a place that we root ourselves and to be that daily bread that we nourish ourselves on and feed ourselves with, you know, we have to be intentional with our time. We have to, yeah, put in time kind of daily to, to feed on it daily to explore it, daily to kind of delve in, dive into it. And this will look different for all of us as we all have different lifestyles and, and schedules and things going on at home and things like that. But ask yourselves, what could, it, what could that look like for you? Maybe it's setting an alarm kind of half an hour earlier in the morning or setting an alarm at another point in the day, putting it in a calendar, whatever it may be. Um, I'm reminded of that, the parable of, you know, the great banquet and those that, that missed out because, you know, they were, they were busy and I think it's really kind of, kind of challenge and an encouragement that, you know, there is a feast that we can dive into and, you know, we don't want to miss out. So being intentional with our time just kind of helps us to get that kind of a habit of reading scripture into our life. And there's many practical things that can help us help us with this. Um, there's all sorts of daily kind of devotionals, um, Bible reading plans, um, on things like the Holy Bible app for those that have that. Um, you can also access it online, not just on, via an app. Uh, it's not just for kind of reading the Bible, but there's all sorts of plans on there, kind of daily plans, monthly plans, things like that to help you get stuck in to scripture. Um, if you're a visual person, maybe watching some of the YouTube videos by the Bible Project alongside your reading can just help you unpack some of those stories even more. You might be someone that likes listening. Um, I know some people that will go on a walk whilst listening um, to the Bible um, in, in audio form. And things like uh, Bible commentaries can be really helpful. Um, you know, just to unpack scripture kind of more than just words. Um, you know, to really understand why some of these kind of stories were so profound at the time, but also how they're, you know, profound to us too and how we can interact with them. And the third point is the word dwell. You know, to really kind of sit in scripture, you know, as like Mary kind of sat at Jesus' feet and just long to, to listen and to be in his presence. You know, we can dwell with scripture and there's a practice called Lectio Divina, which a lot of you have probably heard of, which is a kind of four step way of diving into scripture, um, which actually means holy listening, which is a pretty cool way of, of looking at it. And that 
that involves kind of reading and then meditating, involves kind of praying and then contemplating. Um, and it's this great process of just kind of keep going back over the same passage and allowing God to speak, but sitting in his presence, which could be, um, yeah, just a really helpful way to, to kind of take scripture um, kind of even deeper into into our personal roots in faith and the last one is uh, more of a reminder really that as we read scripture you know this isn't something we do alone we've spoken about the holy spirit but also you know we're part of a body of christ and one really helpful thing with scripture can be sharing with each other it might be that you follow the same bible planners as somebody else and and you're sharing what you're what you're getting from scripture it might be that as a household you you work through the same plan or the same book of the bible but you know we know in the bible it says about building each other up and you know being those living stones that build with each other and sharing kind of scripture and what god is saying is a really helpful tool i know some of the most profound kind of ways that i've heard god speak through scripture have been through sharing it with friends and sharing what we're hearing and there's real richness to doing that so yeah i hope those um four points are helpful for you there are yeah there's so many other things that we can do to become more rooted um but yeah i hope that has encouraged you um yeah and get stuck in dive into scripture let god transform you let him speak to you through his word be expectant So much everybody for participating i trust that god has touched your heart this morning thank you charlotte for that lovely message we're very privileged to have charlotte our youth worker working with us and for us and she's such a, a great lovely person to boot so that was good a couple of bits of news really some family church news just to say please continue to pray for the merrick family as they mourn the death of marie her funeral is on thursday and we pray for clive and stephen and alan as they uh, live in this time of sorrow and sadness and we pray that God's blessing and peace would be upon them. Pray also for Hazel, Hazel, that you would know God's grace and peace as you trust him during these days. And for all of those who suffer, we pray for those who are struggling with work and uh, or the lack of work and the prospect looks uncertain for them. May your blessing be upon them. We include Helen who was sharing with us this morning in that prayer. Father God, we look to your provision and your grace Father, may you be present for these folk who find life really tough at the moment. Thank you, Father. Amen. Also, this morning, got some uh, good news. Uh, Angus and Fiona have been off flying their plane and they managed to visit 71 airfields in under 12 hours in a fixed wing aircraft. And it could be a new Guinness Book of Records. Would you believe it? They're waiting for verification, but that's really intrepid and fantastic. So congratulations, 
you too. Uh, also just want to flag up that next Sunday morning is a Churches Together service. Same time, same place, but some different faces. Folk from different churches are taking part. And uh, it's a way that we can demonstrate our oneness in Christ to the town and the community. We normally do have a joint service at the beginning of July down on the Monday playing fields. And uh, not able to do that this year. But please do come along and uh, just take part in that as we pray for unity and peace and the witness of the church in this town and across this community. So that's really good. And also, can I flag up as well that uh, on Wednesday, we've got a bit of input from Mr. COVID himself, Mike Levy, who's going to be speaking to us a bit about some of the arrangements that we're putting in place to allow some of the activities of the church to start again in the building. Uh, it doesn't mean that we're going to be meeting up congregationally anytime soon, but it does mean that there will be uh, measures in in place so that we can meet together safely in different ways and at different times so please come along on Wednesday and listen to what Mike has to say also we've got Dave Day sharing with us on Wednesday about the work that he does with Bridge Trust Limited and some of the relief work they do in the slums in India really interesting stuff so come along and see that too well it's been good to be together and I pray that the Lord would bless you that his grace and peace would fill your heart, that his faithfulness would be a strong anchor for you, that his spirit would fill you so that you would witness to Christ's love in every context that you find yourself. May you know these things and God's love in abundance in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.